New Comic Book Day, November 11th, 2023. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Today, we've got four books for you. They all happen to be number ones. I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Let's jump into it. We have Gair Ground Zero from Image Comic Books. This is a number one. This is by Jeff Johns and Gary Frank on the art. Art's super good. This is in the Ghost Machine universe. Brand new Ghost Machine universe. Basically, we are following this character, Gair. He is basically a nuclear, nuclear, um, he, he goes nuclear, and he's got these really crazy bombastic powers. And on the other side of the fence, we have a group of military folks, and they are looking for Gair, and they want to basically kill him. Um, this is a really heartfelt story, though. I really cared for both sides of this, and that is true, brilliant writing by Jeff Johns. It made me care about both sides and see both perspectives. Gair really just trying to get back to his family. Uh, he's got two kids and a wife. And one of the other protagonists in the story, on the other side, on the military side, is trying to meet up with his wife. So you really do, even in this first issue, with how brief and how quick it is, it's a quick read. It really, really is a quick read. The art is very nice. Overall, though, if I were to rate this, I have three ratings. I've got skip it, read it, and pull it. I would say read it. I'm super stoked to see the second issue. I do believe this is a mini series, though, so I don't know how many issues it's going to go, but it will be a mini uh, mini series. But I'm definitely going to check out the second issue, and I definitely recommend you do the same. Moving on to the second book, we've got Ministry of Compliance. The Ministry of Compliance is by Ridley. And where do I start with this? This book has a lot of exposition in it. It is a thick book, too. It's a chonky boy. We've got about 40 pages, I would guess, in this book, and a lot of it is exposition. We're describing the world. We're learning about what happened. Let me give you a brief, brief synopsis. Basically, 29 years ago, aliens came to Earth and started infiltrating our everyday life. There are several ministries for these aliens that exist and operate on Earth. Our main character here, her job is that she is the minister of compliance. So what her job is, she basically makes sure that all these other ministries that, again, are with the, <laughs> with the alien, they all have to report to the higher powers within the organization of the extraterrestrial. Her job is to make sure that they're all in compliance. And this one is pretty gruesome. Um, and it's not to say that nothing happens because there are certain plot points and things that happen in this book um, but there is a lot of exposition. We do have another character who is half alien and half human. And she works brand new on the job in the Ministry of Compliance. And of course, her and the minister here on the cover. They interact in this issue and it's a really fun read. I would say, though, if it's a long read. This, this book probably took me about 15, 20 minutes to get through. It is a bit of a slog. Like I said, there's a lot of exposition and a lot of just words Words per page are cranked up to 12 on this one. So if that's not your cup of tea, if you like action-packed stories where the art is leading the story, this might not be for you. Personally, I am going to check out the second issue, though. I was into the world. The world that they built here is really cool. But it did seem like this book in particular has a lot of just standing around and talking. Now, again, this is a number one, so we did need to get some of that world building out of the way. Overall, though, I would say this is a solid read. Read it, see if you like it. If you do, check out the second one from your local comic shop. But yeah, issue number one of Ministry of Compliance, off to a decent start. Next up, we have The Deviant. This is by James Tinian and Holy Smokes, guys. This one, first off... Trigger warning, if you're not into gore and blood and guts and choice, very foul language, this one ain't for you because holy smokes, this thing gets a rip roaring out of the gates. It is gruesome. But let me give you the brief synopsis. We are following a writer, a comic book writer, who is interviewing someone who 20 years ago was arrested for the murders, the grisly murders of some uh, serial killer, right? And he was, his whole shtick was he was a Santa Claus at a mall. Um, 
So he's interviewing him, and it seems like the main character is probably a stand-in for Tinian himself. So some very meta-commentary there on being a comic book writer, talking about these murders. Um, but yeah, overall, though, the story is really good. It's very nicely paced, I will say. I really enjoyed it. Um, there is, of course, a nice little twist at the end that uh, will keep you hooked to book number two. But in my opinion... I've seen enough to know that this is an absolute pull. We are pulling this. I will be reading this, um, hopefully for months to come. Tinian is on an absolute crazy, crazy run right now with all of the books that he's putting out. But The Deviant is definitely one that I am pulling and reading. Awesome, awesome book. Last but certainly not least, we have The Superior Spider-Man issue number one by the original team, Slot and Bagley. First off, from an art perspective, I do want to say this is an absolute heater. Vibrant colors, excellent art from Bagley, and overall, talking about the story, we have Bailey, who is Spider-Boy, and Peter Parker, Spider-Man. They are in New York City, Times Square, and Mirage is there. Peter Parker makes an excellent quip about, hey, you can take this D-list villain down by yourself. <laughs> he does. He laughs about it. They share a laugh. Anyways, then a brand new to Spider-Man villain pops up, Supernova. This is a character, this is a supervillain that was created by Doc Ock from the original Superior Spider-Man way back in the day. But the twist is... Of course, Peter Parker wasn't in his body, so he doesn't know that Doc Ock, while in Peter Parker's body, created this supervillain. So Supernova is pissed at Spider-Man for creating her, of course, and that's kind of where it takes off. Again, the art is excellent. This is an action-packed, very bombastic first issue. From cover to cover, we have action. I'm so stoked that Spider-Boy is getting used in this series. It's a character that I'm super interested in. And, of course, Doc Ock is here playing schemes. And there's a nice little twist at the end. And there is an extra mini book in the back that shows off Spider-Boy working with Doc Ock Spider-Man from back in the day of the original Superior Spider-Man. And they're taking on Mr. Negative. It is a really fun backstory to show. I like that they're weaving in stories of Spider-Boy because, you know, they just poofed, snapped him into existence and nobody really knows. So now we're getting to see some of his tales. And that was at the end of the story. But overall, the actual book, Superior Spider-Man number one, was really fun. Absolute pull. Spider-Man is one of my favorite superheroes of all time. So I'll definitely be putting this in the pull list. Yeah, there's the list. My four books this week, they're all number ones. Let me know, though, in the comments section what you're picking up. What should I be reading? Did you like Superior Spider-Man as much as I did? And let me know about the other books. And, of course, all that other YouTuber stuff. Comment, subscribe, ring the bell. I appreciate you. And until the next one, I will catch you all on the flippy flop. Adios.